All right, today, Travis Longstruck, we have here. Um, we're refreshing the trans, upgrading the trans, bigger input shaft to prepare for a uh, head install, a reman head, and 250% injectors. He's gonna add a 472 turbo onto it as a single. It's got dual fuelers. We're aiming for about a thousand horsepower street truck. It's gonna be a pretty big monster. A little recap on what we did on the S10 over the weekend. Um, we had the body completely off of it. We got the harness back from Exergy and had to reinstall that. That wiring pretty much runs all throughout the truck from the very tail end to the front, so it's just a lot easier if the body of the truck is off. So we had it completely off and got all of the harness put back in, got all of the uh, battery cables and stuff run. We ended up going with a new uh, master kill switch went to a solid state relay instead of the old-fashioned manual style. We used to have a, a switch up in, the, up in the cab and then we had a uh, push-pull cable that ran to the back of the truck. Um, just eliminated that, takes a little bit of weight out of the equation and uh, went to a solid state relay so that should be a nice little setup. Um, got the harness put back in, also got the transmission reinstalled. Uh, while we had the body off we just installed any other little um, things that we had taken out of the truck. We got the head restraint put back in and got the um, vent fan put back in for the, the driver helmet. We have a fan that pretty much blows cool air throughout the helmet um, so that he can keep his visor down um, and not melt. So got some of that stuff put back in, put the body back on and uh, got the new Lexan put in. We got the new windshield in, new rear window um, and yeah, getting close to putting things back together. So lots of things to punch out this week yet, but uh, hoping to have the truck fired up by Wednesday or Thursday and see uh, you know how well everything works and hopefully have a few days to work some bugs out uh, before we go to Florida next week. All right, today we got Nathan Orr's truck on the dyno. It's an 06 48 RE. Uh, just got back from D&J Precision. Uh, they installed a Predator series motor into it. Uh, the truck has a set of compounds of 468 over 488 with 250% extra G injectors and uh, extra G 14 mil race pump. Um, we're running it on the dyno, taking some data logs. We're working with uh, higher power performance. They're the ones doing the tuning on the truck so we'll send them some data logs and they'll send re tune revisions. Um, so we'll see what kind of power we can make out of it and uh, see what she can do. So we got Nathan's truck finished. Um, we were talking with, or I was talking with Jonathan from Higher Power Performance, since he was the one doing the tuning on the truck. The customer wanted a thousand horsepower. Um, the truck's capable of more, but uh, he wanted it to be as reliable as possible at a thousand horsepower. Um, so we got the five tunes range from 650 to 1,007. Um, pretty much each tune is 100 horsepower uh, spaced approximately. So we got the customer, or we got the truck making the kind of power that the customer wants, um, and we're done. Alright, today we have uh, Tyler Pouchet's truck, a customer from North Carolina. Uh, he brought his truck here for a trans refresh, Comp 3 I believe, and we're installing Anita Pro. This truck has a um, roll cage, uh, gutted bed, races 670, and um, we're getting them fixed up for index racing. All right, we installed tap shift buttons on Tyler Pouchet's uh, ratchet shifter to allow gear selection when he's uh, driving down the street if he's on the dyno it'll give him the option of picking his own gear whenever he wants to 
how how he wants to drive it or we are able to put it into auto mode and go racing. Hey guys, so here um, customer came in yesterday and uh, we tuned his truck and we get up to highway speeds about 55, 60 mile an hour and you get into it in sixth gear and it just starts slipping the clutch real bad. So um, we talked him into buying a dual disc clutch and that's what we're doing here is we're installing our dual disc. Got Mac McElveen's truck on the dyno again. He was here uh, beginning of January, about a month and a half ago. Um, he upgraded his injectors, went to 100% injectors and a 12 mil CP3. Uh, just trying to get it dialed in, get his EGTs in check for towing since he uses the truck for hot shot. Um, we'll be air limited today as far as making peak power. He still has a 363. Um, so we'll mess with the tuning and see if we can't get it dialed in. Alright, so first pull made 719 horsepower and 1320 torque. Um, right at the end it blew a coolant hose off so we got coolant everywhere we got a mess to clean up uh, once we get the coolant hose fixed um, and the mess cleaned up then we'll get back to dynoing hey guys we uh, so earlier uh, this truck that we have on the dyno uh, blew the up radiator hose off so we came up with a fix with it and we did one more <laughs> we, uh, we did one of our um, upper water neck pieces uh, that we just came out with and basically what that does, he had a mission motor radio already so we welded a dash 20 fitting in it and made a vibrant uh, dash 20 hose so he will not have any problems of uh, blowing off and yeah so we're going to throw it back on the dyno and see what it does. Okay, doing a recap on Matt's truck. Uh, Larson actually left and went on vacation without finishing his video, so I get to finish it. Uh, but the main reason was is uh, Matt decided uh, to do the billet uh, lower pieces on the water neck as well. Um, so we put the Dash 20 um, hose on the lower radiator as well, so he didn't have to worry about ever blowing a coolant hose while he was on the road, and we didn't finish that project till like 10:30. Um, so. He's up and gone, Larson was at home at that point, but I wanted to fit, we, we ended up doing 540 horsepower on a 1900 to 2300 RPM hold uh, with still keeping the EGTs in check. Um, and if you watch the previous video when he still had the smaller injectors in it, um, we were at like 530 horsepower max effort. Um, so with the bigger injectors, we were able to cut the pulse width way back like we were able to cut like 800 microseconds out of the injector pulse width um, and we were able to make more power and have the same EGTs um, than we were with the smaller injectors. Uh, so his turbo is still the limiting factor on how much power we can sustain on a hold when he's climbing a mountain um, doing a you know pulling a hill at 30,000 pounds. Um, but peak power was 719 horsepower uh, that's really pushing up for an S363 uh, so we dialed it back uh, to where he can still have a tune that makes 600 horsepower peak um, and still have a good 540 horsepower usable power in the 1900 to 2300 RPM uh, towing curve.